previously on AI the Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. How is it? Ow! Hmm, nope. I only taste blood. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Nope, I just taste my own insides. And now back to... Who's that girl? What's her name? Is she cool? Is she lame? Oh, you're talking about what's her name? Mizuki. Is she lame? Is she cool? Is she breaking every rule? Is she anybody's fool? Mizuki. 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 Macho in her own parade. Mizuki. She's like one in a million. Mizuki. Mizuki. Macho cool for dumb that day. Catch her if you can. Mizuki. Who? Is that a really horny character? No, that's me. Ew. Who is she and why does she have her own song? Tegli, I had a song too. Mizuki, Mizuki, Macho in her own beret. Mizuki, she's like one in a million. Mizuki, Mizuki, Macho go for dumb date. No one's cooler than Mizuki. She's her own biggest fan, Mizuki. Catch her if you can, Mizuki. Sneako B! Back with some more AI The Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. When we last left off, we investigated Kizuna Somnium, which was not too much different than what I kind of expected. It was very much fantasy like, you know, focusing on fairy tales and such, with the fairy tales tying to her own youth growing up with her, uh, who she called Big Sis, which was the girl that she was with when she was growing up and that was eventually adopted into another family and i will say just based on the little bit that we heard about how this person acts it did sound a lot like the upside down mass face girl right puts on a bit of a front right and it's definitely uh tough but it's also clearly going through some shit, right? Like there's something going on beneath the surface. I don't know, it just, it definitely felt very similar to her, but that's just a theory. I mean, I could be wrong, but I do think that's potentially where this could be going. However, the other big tidbit that we got from it is actually not related to Kizuna at all, but in fact with Mizuki, because apparently a book that she uh, found in Shikara's office states that Mizuki was actually experimented on, which is why she has the super strength. And also the fact that uh, Shoka and Renju are actually not her biological parents, which is definitely an interesting one. I'm still not totally certain how I feel about it, to be honest, in regards to uh, like, I don't know. I think it's sort of I need to kind of wait and see how that really plays into it. I mean, it's it, I think only for me, because up to this point, it has sort of been kind of a joke, right? It's like almost like we're suddenly like pulling back the curtain like, Oh, yeah, no, this isn't actually natural, and we actually ha do have an explanation for it, and it's not just like, ha-ha, funny, strong little girl, ha-ha-ha, you know? Because it never really seemed like the characters really cared, right, up to this point. They never really, like, questioned why she's a god. So for there to, to like, suddenly be a plot explanation for it, it was sort of just like, oh, okay, like, it kind of like whip, like a whiplash, like I'm back to the real world suddenly, right? But I will say one thing, you guys definitely did not like that fucking plot reveal holy shit the majority of the comments last episode were just how much you guys disliked that freaking uh that plot point point. and uh someone that i think gave a, a really good explanation as to to why a lot of people seem to feel this way was seacounts 20 who last episode said everyone is also saying that the mizuki retcon is dumb and detracts from her root but i really want to get into why like, a large factor for why Dante was reluctant to get close to her is because he didn't want to take her away from her actual family. Except, it wasn't her actual family, so that internal conflict feels a lot sillier. Granted, he likely didn't know this at the time, but it doesn't really change the fact that this greatly reduces the emotional impact on the player. Likewise, it makes Renju and Shoko look so much worse. They were already not getting along. Renju was busy with work and supporting Hitomi and Iris. What made either of them think it was a good idea to go out of their way to adopt a child? Furthermore, a major factor for why Shoko resents Mizuki is because she viewed her daughter as a chain around herself, giving up her own life in order to raise her. While this was a selfish excuse in the original, the fact that she adopted Mizuki instead frankly just makes her beyond stupid. I get neither of them meant to be good parents, but the first game thoroughly explained why. Runju had a lot of shit going on in his life, and Shoko was also raised by a shitty parent and was not mature and emotionally equipped to raise a child essentially by herself. But now they just look stupid. Finally, Mizuki's internal struggle of choosing between her biological family, or more specifically their memory, 
and her newfound family doesn't carry anywhere near as much weight because it's two different adopted families. Technically, from a purely narrative perspective, it doesn't really change anything for her, but thematically, it feels different. Like, I wouldn't say it ruins it, but it doesn't have the same impact. It's quite clear they didn't think this through all that much. It's really interesting. There were so many comments about this in the previous episode, and I, I suddenly felt, you know what I suddenly felt? I suddenly felt like I was in the other shoe of what, of like the last Let's Play, right? Where there are things that seemingly bothered me much and didn't really bother a lot of other people, right? Now suddenly there's a, there's, there's a plot point that personally didn't really bother me that much. Like, and my reasoning for thinking like unsure about it is more in long lines of actually her explaining with her, her super strength thing than the actual family part. So I, I sort of found it sort of funny that like, oh man, wow, yeah. Like just to see everyone sort of really up in arms, like fucking hate this shit. So like, I, I think I, I, I definitely agree. I think that you, you honestly make a really good argument, see, see Kat. I think personally for the, the whole family aspect for Mizuki, I don't think it really bothers me that much because in the end, like, I feel like the message is that, you know, Date, the one that actually looked after her and acted like a, you know, a decent parent to her was a real family and not the people that even if they weren't her biological family and just another adopted family, basically treated her like shit, right? And didn't do anything for her. Well, I definitely understand the theming of, yeah, not of choosing someone that isn't your biological, you know, parent over the group that is your biological parents, right? And I definitely get that because that comparison is what sort of drives that that narrative, right? That's sort of like a big part of it. But I think it doesn't really bother me as much because I think for me personally, it was just the fact that she chose Date that really stood out to me. But I think you, you make a good point. I will wholeheartedly agree about something else, though. I, I do agree that I think the fact that Renju and Shoko adopted Mizuki does make them seem really stupid. Because before, it seemed like they they had this child, right? Like, through an accidental pregnancy or whatever of some kind, right? And that forced them to be parents when they weren't really prepared for it. So, in this sense, it's almost like, well, then why did they go out and seek a child if that was the case? I mean, there there can be other reasons for that. Like maybe Shoko did it because she hoped it would bring her and Renju closer together, right? By dropping a child off. Like maybe there's like this unspoken plot point in that regard. Now, I think that's something that would probably should be elaborated on. But I mean, I agree. Yeah, a as it is now, without any more context in that regard, it does make them look stupid. Granted, I haven't finished the game. So, I mean, there could be some other explanations for it. But seeing as you guys are all like, sort of consensually pretty like up in arms about this. I, I kind of imagine a lot of this is just not going to get talked about. Otherwise, I would not see so many angry comments. But yeah, I think overall it's probably wasn't a super well thought out uh, retcon, but I also don't think it necessarily like bothers me as it m bothers a lot of other people. But I also understand why it does, right? I do. But Ccast, thank you so much for your, honestly, your very well written and very well argued uh, uh, comment about why this retcon was maybe not the best of ideas. And it is for that reason you are comment of the day. This is the thing too, what I find sort of interesting about, you know, opinions, right? Opinions of like games and stuff, like it doesn't always mean that people are right or wrong, right? It's just like, did something that happened in the game that was maybe something you didn't like, did it bother you as much as other people, right? Because some people, they just aren't as bothered by that that point, right? There are a fucking shit ton of things in the last game that bothered me that definitely didn't bother a lot of other people. Why do they bother us particularly? I don't know. There's probably some deep-seated Freudian reason for it. Make a deep dive into our psyche. Maybe do even do a Somnium dive into our psyche to figure out why. But it's just how we are, right? It's just how we are as people. But it doesn't also mean that you're necessarily wrong, right? If someone says that this, this thing's stupid and it sucks and they give a good argument for it and like, all right, yeah, that's. I, I absolutely see why you feel that way. And similarly, well, I didn't think it was that way. Why? Because, I don't know, it didn't bother me as much. And I can't say that that person's wrong either, right? So it's like, we've all had hot takes, all right, for anything. <laughs> there is not a person on this planet that doesn't have, like, a hot take for a specific thing that, like, totally, like, disagrees with everybody else, right? But that's just part of being human, I think. Anyway, that was uh, that was my TED talk. Hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> enjoyed it about why opinions are like assholes and everyone's got one. But anyway, after we uh, made that discovery, we uh, also discovered Chikara's other half of his body and have essentially been running around investigating all these different places. Also discovering that Ryuki arrived 
at the freaking uh, department store and freaking shot a dude because he thought it was uh, terror putting up the balloons. <laughs> really? I feel like if Ricky's been this fucked up for like six years, it is a little like shocking that we truly are like not taking him off like the police force at this point or sending him into a, like an institution because we need some kind of therapy. I don't know if we're giving him any therapy. Is that part of the, the plan at all, boss? You got any insurance or coverage or anything with this fucking abyss agent shit? But uh, anyway, oh God, before we uh, head on out of here, so my evaluation, do I uh, level up? I think I actually might have. Yes, class up, A3. I got Wonder Hat, Chib Chibi Tama, and Chibi Iba. Well, that sounds interesting. Chibi forms of them? Or like a shirt that has a chibi version of them on there. Oh yeah. Okay, so I was actually told by one of my mods that there's actually a uh, a thing in the manual here that actually goes into more detail about the fucking Tamagotchi shit. So Mizuki evolves to this if if Courage is the highest stat. Iris evolves to this if Love is the highest stat. Uh, stat. Evolves to Oda if it's Naughty is the highest, the highest stat or Impish. And Amame, if Madness is the highest stat. And then it actually tells you exactly what they'll evolve into based on each one. Okay, well, that's good. It doesn't exactly give the uh, the explanation behind it, but I did have also somebody provide me a guide as to uh, what, like, answers will give what. And I think I'm going to start using it now because this shit's starting to piss me off. Because it really doesn't feel like it makes any fucking sense half the time. I don't imagine most of it is so, like, vague and also so, like, Japanese-focused that I, I feel like an American or people outside of Japan are, are going to have a hard time understanding, like, what the fuck it fucking wants. Okay, so from here I can get sejima E. If love and madness is the highest stat, or love or madness. That's what I thought. Okay, what ha haunted spot would you like to go to? Graveyard, ruins, old battlefield, mountains. Apparently, mountains is crazy. Yes, of course it is. All right, Abba, give us our wise words of the day here. Hey, how are you? <laughs> she really does look cute with honestly the hat and the little, uh, little outfit there. All right, go, I'm bored. Ugh, I'm bored. Hmm. Typical teenager behavior, equating bored with cool. Hell yeah. Because I'm fucking edgy, right? I'm brooding, Iba. You just don't understand me. You don't understand me, Iba. Okay, we only have two places left. At least at the moment. We might we might get more. Who knows? I've kind of been going around and been like, you should check this place. And then they had another place. Uh, Kume Shrine. Time to wash my belly button. Oh yeah, by the way, you guys also brought up that uh, the whole thing with uh, the belly button, like she did learn about it, that that was a fake thing in- You see, no balloons here. In one of the roots, but it wasn't in the main story route. So that's why uh, she still believes it here, which is funny. But mama said- You should go to Ikume Shrine, where the fruit of immortality resides. So says I. I trust her mystical precognition as far as I can throw her. Huh. Uh, uh I don't see anything. What's the fruit of immortality anyway? Likely the Tokijiku no Kaku. You know it? Yes. I have heard of it before. But what you mean? I just Googled it right now. It is said that eating it will grant you youth and eternal life. Wasn't that, uh, wasn't that also the, something that we did in Iris Somnium in this area? I think that was like a part of it. Some kind of, some kind of fruit. Many believe it is a Tachibana orange. Mmm. It is an object of worship at this shrine. See a lot of oranges, they'll never die. Wow. The fruit of immortality. Whoa. Oh shit, that was, <laughs> that freaked the fuck out of me. I God damn it, stupid. So every time I click off, by the way, if you're wondering why, why do I suddenly whip around like this? Because if at any point I click off my screen to like my other monitor to like check something or look at a comment or whatever, it causes my mouse to go all the way over here. So then the moment I move my joystick, like at all to move, my mouse is already on the right side here. I just go, Bleh! <laughs> I thought that was Mizuki suddenly turning around because there was some shit back there. Da -da -da! Fucking terror just hiding behind a tree back there. He's like, you don't see me. <laughs> no balloons in this area. What about here? X-ray! There it is! Hey, wait! There it is! There it is! The balloon! I can haul my ass in there. You are correct. This is a red and blue balloon. See? I told you! It's full of snails! How did Mama know? 
doesn't matter to me. It should. Let's try popping it. It looks like there's something in there. Like the one at Yoyagi Park. Hmm. Let's do it. Hiya! Hiya! Three? Three. What does it say on the back? Indig. In these nuts, Mizuki. Ah! Three and indig. Hmm. We cannot currently decode this message. We need to find all three balloons. This is actually telling the first balloon we found, I think. Or is it the second one we found? First, well, yeah, aside from, aside from the one that we got at the start. What is it, Mizuki? Nothing. Just, this really takes me back. But now's not the time for reminiscing. We need to find the balloons. Balloon! Where you at? Inside this thing? Tree? What? Ah! Ah! Oh! Pfft. Look! Over there! No doubt about it. That is one of Terra's balloons. Just like Lian said. Can use my eye lasers to shoot down. But it is high out of reach. It's fine. I got it. I'm just gonna run up the side of this tree. Wall run. Just like Ryuki. Do it, Mizuki. Are you about to fucking knock this thing down with your- Yeah. Okay. I was like- <laughs> She just jumps like 30 feet in the air. I was like, is she going to knock that tree down? I don't think the people here would be happy about that. Wee. Why did you pop it in midair? Two. Don't sweat the details. Well, in any case, you did reveal what was inside the balloon. Yeah. It says two. And on the back... Unra. Unra. No way. Terror is a pervert. What? Unra? Clearly, it's a code for undergarments. Terror is a panty thief. Oh my God! Fucking call Yagami. He'll know what to do. The one at the shrine said three, and on the back it said indig. Inding dilly. Ring a ding 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 ding. Ring a dong ding ding do. So ring ding unra. It is still indecipherable to me. Ring ding ding. Bleh. There's one more balloon left. There's no more place to go though. Afterward, ask the workers and the children if anyone saw someone try tying a balloon to the tree. But it was no good. No one saw anything. With that settled, how about I left? Suddenly, nurse son. Hello. Ah! It's a nurse. Watch her be terror. This fucking. No name nurse lady who acts well. She actually has a name. They, we we brought it up, but we just still just call her nurse. I'm gonna fucking wink sick you, lady. Show me your mind. Oh Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Right over here. Hello. Because that's what mom and dad named me. She appears to be in a theater group or something. Well, at least that's what we're telling ourselves. Yikes. Hello. Good day. Good day. Are you here about Chikara? I saw in the news that a corpse was found. Oh, by the way, you guys brought up, the, likely the reason why he had like this ice around him was that he's been there all night. So it was more like, you know, the next morning he was like, he had some like frozen dew on him. So I see. I was kind of surprised when he brought it up because it was, it wasn't clearly, you know, you know, a very clear detail that was in there. That makes the whole thing even more baffling. What do you mean? I had always thought Jin Furaway's disease had something to do with his murder. He had half-body tumors. What? It's a rare disease that causes tumors to develop only on one half of the body. There's no way that's a thing, all right? Now you're telling us this with all the half-body half killings, lady? Organs, skin, bones. I don't remember which side of the body it was for him, but I always thought his murder had to do with the disease somehow. But Chikara doesn't fit into that at all. I remember. I should know it. He was also my patient. Every 
other one's my patient. Jakara's right side that was found at Sakuba High had all the innards removed. That wasn't reported by the press. Hmm. But how does it all fit together? Whatever the case, the nurse may have just given us a vital clue. Why are you here? One of the children here is cared for at our hospital, but they didn't want to come to the hospital today. So I came here to attend to them. Bow out at the balloon. I didn't see anyone. I just got here moments ago. But you fucking lie to me. I see. You're terror, aren't you? If no one saw them, they must have snuck in at night. The security here is pretty bad. It hasn't improved any over the years. But that is how Mr. Chieda wants it. This isn't a prison. We don't need cameras. Oh, if only we did. That awful incident all those years ago could have been avoided. What incident? The missing child. I'm sure you've heard of a child going missing from Ion. Uru Somazuki, a six-year-old, went missing one day. Okay, now we're finally bringing that back up again. Whether it was kidnapping or an accident, no one has any clue. And he still has not been found. He could be terror now. It was a distressing event. If they had cameras, maybe it could have been prevented. Even after that tragedy, Mr. Chieda still refuses to upgrade the security around here. I don't know what he's thinking. He's like, no, no evidence. There is much to think about. <laughs> think about Mr. About, uh, Mr. Chieda. Really reminds me of fucking uh, Mr. Peter Smith from fucking uh, Family Guy. My back is hurting from the chair I'm sitting on. Where's the Tylenol? If I lay down flat on the floor, it usually kind of fixes it. Tony Danza from Who's the Boss says, Hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> Sorry. We need to find all the balloons. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. Holy shit, I got fucking jets on this? What? Since when? I don't remember that shit at all. After that, I went to different places around the city. The last one was nowhere to be found. The sun is already setting. I could have swore on the previous scenes we saw it. It was just like a regular scooter with no extra crazy shit back there. Oh, look, I was in the center, too. It was like a juiced up scooter. Cool. What do we do? Oh, my God. We, damn, we were going fast, Mizuki. Oh, my God. Look at this. We we have to bring in some speed limits, right? Look at this shit. We we're going way faster than that fucking limo, dude. Calm down, Mizuki. Right? It's just because I don't have a fucking window next to me or something. Like that. Oh, God. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, it's too fast, it's freaking me out! It is dangerous to drive while agitated. No, faster, Mizuki, faster! It's fine! At this speed, falling wouldn't even hurt me! But the bike could break. It was provided to you by Abyss. Fuck you. If you damage company property like that, it will come out of your salary. Really? This is the company car? They they just they gave me a fucking super-powered moped? Alright. Ugh. They got some weird benefits at Abyss here. Good girl. Oh, ah, that's a slow and boring. Ugh. What's the point of having a turbo if you're not going to get to use it? Mizuki, it's from Boss. Damn it. Crap. I will connect you. No, don't. Hey, Mizuki, I got a call from HQ. There was a report of someone spotting a balloon in the warehouse district in Ariake. Can you head there right away? Wait, but I was there already. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. It's Gen. It's freaking Gen. He's putting the balloons around. I think that's what he was asked to do. I think Gen's going to be our next Somnium to hop into here. I didn't see any balloons. You must have missed it. They said they saw it around 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m.? Anyway, I'm counting on you. If the balloon was there at 8.30 a.m. And it was gone by the time we got there. Uh oh. That must mean... Someone took it. But who would have done that? Could it be? Could it fucking demon be? Ramen World Cuisine, February 12th, Tuesday, 1830. Okay, so maybe took it and then not... Didn't put it up? Oh my gosh, people here. I don't believe it. Gen! Hey, hey, you can't just barge into the kitchen like that. Just listen, please, Gen. Are you hiding something from me? Uh oh, did, did you find out I've been using frog meat? Cut the shit. I'm searching your place. Stop. Hey, come on. My customers are going to be freaked out if they see you rummaging around here. You can't be touching things in the kitchen. It's unsanitary. And on top of that, 
Boy, I hate to have to ask this, but... Do you have a warrant? Do you have a warrant? Yeah! Mizuki, I know. There's a way to search without touching anything. <laughs> I've got a... I've got my warrant right here, bitch! Fucking pulls out a gun. Right. Yep, x-ray time. Da -da 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 -da. There it is. Is it? Oh, oh, it's it's popped, yeah. A popped balloon. But x-ray will not reveal the color. It could be a coincidence. Hey, what are you? Shut up. Behold. What is this? Why did you lie? Actually, I don't really care why right now. Don't hit me in the head with a frying pan. Don't pull a note on me. I need you to answer me. Or walk or whatever. There should have been a piece of paper in the balloon. Where is it? I ate it. Are you really not going to tell me? Then you're coming with me. Or I can have the cops bust in here and close you down for the day to search every inch of this place. Which do you prefer? You're going in the Somnium again. I had a feeling. All right, February 12th, Tuesday, 1940. Why did he lie? That's what I'm gonna sink into him to find out. Okay, I think this one's gonna give us a, a cho Well, actually, will it? I don't know. <laughs> will it give us a choice? I think technically the choice for uh, Ryuki didn't come till a bit after this one. I'm actually not even sure if he had a... I have to check the flowchart. I can't I can't pause right here. Well, you may not discover exactly why during the sink. I was kind of thinking maybe mayhaps her, uh, her break in the path, you know, of actually having choices will, will literally mirror uh, Ryuki's as well. But I can still get valuable information. Ah, you mean what the piece of paper in the balloon said? Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Mizuki, before you start, I'll say one thing. I know. I can only stay in Somnium for six minutes. I've heard it so many times I can hear it in my sleep. Well, technically... Let's just get started. Okay. Ready? And... Let's begin. Peter, can I just, like, sign a contract or something so you don't have to say that to me every time? Probably be a pretty sad one, honestly. This is Brahmin. This is a small place. Finding what we need should go quick. Then again, I feel like every Somnium has been pretty sad in this game so far. It's either been sad or incredibly creepy. I would not be so sure. You can never anticipate what might happen in Somnia. Oh, wait, actually, I could check. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. This day, he actually did not have a single Somnium when he went to go visit Tokiko. Oh, wait, yeah, it's right there. It's right there. I'm, an, I'm sorry, I'm drunk. Yeah, so what I was thinking, I was like, okay, maybe we won't get a branching path till down here. Mimicking, mimicking his? May, maybe? But if that were the case, I wouldn't be surprised if there was only one branching path on Mizuki's side. Because I think there was at least, like, four or five branching paths in the original game. I think about four-ish. I mean, granted, so wait, wait, yeah, hold on. So that'd be one and two. We've only had two so far. So I'd be surprised there was only, like, three in this whole game. Anyway, what is that you're doing there? Salmon. I am imitating the rugged salmon of the Sea of Okotsk. But why? We are here to investigate Gen. He has been acting fishy lately. Wah, wah. Ha ha, very clever. That's also incredibly impressive, Iba. Shall we begin? So we're just not gonna acknowledge that, huh? Nope! Moving on! Activate! All right, mental lock one, two, three. Oh, Mame's here. Four. Oh, just four. Find the last clue Gen is hiding. Gen definitely knows something about the last clue. 
where it was hidden, what it was written on, find out the critical information. Guess we should look around the place first. Okay. Uh, table seat? Inspect. A normal table seat. It's a little tight. Maintaining social distancing would be hard. Golden Yokocho has tons of tiny restaurants. Sorry, nobody wears a mask this game anyway. Damn, my fucking, fucking eyeballing. Uh, all the water in the pond, pull out, drink water, poison. It's gotta be poison, right? Fucker. God, whatever. I refer to my guy when I surf. Getting too many poison, not crazy. Ganesha. This is a picture of Ganesha. A Hindu god. She was beheaded, and her head was replaced by an elephant. Is that really the story of that? Oh my god. Stories about gods are always really out there. This picture is blank. I did not realize that was the uh, story of Ganesha. I thought it was just an elephant god. Against cooking notes. Hmm. Let's see. By incorporating different flavors, a patron will be able to enjoy this same cuisine multiple times. The angle of the knife can change the flavor, texture, appearance, for intestine stew. Ew. Also, the... It looks like a omi rice in the shape of a balloon with blood on wow, it. Wow, Genny. He sure studies cooking hard. You can tell how serious he is about being a chef. Which explains why it tastes so good. Funkin's cooking notes. Okay, that was the fast one. Win the cooking battle. Uh-oh. Cooking skill. Something can be improved by something. Commission your life! What is this? Komeji's voice. TV? Or maybe the radio? Let's look. Something's happening over there. Uh, blackout! Iba, you okay? What happened? What? The floor! Now, returning back to us, our mysterious Super Chef A! Woo! The pride of our culinary academy, Super Chef A! Iron Chef, let's go! What? Super Chef A? Iba? This episode's battle shall be A versus Gen. Battle to the death. Our panel of gourmet dining expert judges tonight shall be Matsushita Diner's very God own damn it. Ota Matsushita to provide commentary. And he's back to his old form again. I'm looking forward to tasting Super Chef A's dishes, but the other contestant tonight has a chance to finally impress me. Before we've even gotten started, Oda is already trying to get under Gen's skin. He is known for his brutal honesty. Our second judge for this evening shall be the beautiful Amame Doi from the Fine Maid Cafe establishment, Sunfish Pocket. Good luck, Gabby! Nee. Hey now, you're the judge. You can't play favorites. It's fine. I'll be fair and square. All right, I'm guessing the last one then will be Iris. Let's get a comment from both of the contestants. First, Gen Ishiyagane. Oh, wait, maybe it's just the two judges? I don't take cooking lightly. Oh, you can sense his passion burning like spicy Korean cuisine. Next is Super Chef A. Tell us what's going through your mind right now. What the fuck is going on? Uh... Okay, we're almost ready to begin this showdown. Oh, yeah, just two judges. He's just three for things like this, but whatever. Uh, a cook-off with Gen? What if there's a tie? If you win, can you unlock his mental lock? Even if that was the case, I've never cooked before. You're a high-tech artificial intelligence. You can do this. You're built with Google installed into you, Iba. You'll be fine. I... I can? Yes, if you train. Train? We can use the timey from earlier to shorten any amount of time down to one second. Well, true, but even a few hours of practice will not be enough. 
I said any amount of time. Fucking 800 years! M Mizuki, don't tell me. What are you thinking? I'm thinking about training. Are you serious? Please, tell me you are joking. It's gonna be the fastest training montage ever, Aiba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Maybe I don't have to train. <laughs> now, fuck this. Train. Let's begin the training. <laughs> All that fucking time, like a billion seconds. Uh, seriously? And so the long days of training began. What is this fucking garbage? Bah! You're not even chopping anything, Iba. And so the months passed. Nearly a year later, though only one second had passed in reality. Hmm. You dare challenge me to a battle of culinary prowess? Pathetic. Suck my toes, Gen! Yes! I've created a monster! A cooking monster! Yes! Bring it on, Gen Ishiogane. Wow! Look at that passion! You can cut the tension in the air with a butter knife! Please introduce the theme. This battle's theme is... Food! A multi-course meal for our judge! Chef's battle! Tonight is the night we reveal the fruits of our cooking labor. What happens if you pick the, the... I mean, I don't need training. <laughs> what will you make first? A salad. Fiber is an important part of a healthy diet. With my culinary inspiration backed by dedicated training, I can do anything. Let's cook. Make a grilled cheese. Input cooking command. Oh, fuck. Here we go. Ready. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. My God! Witness my superior cooking technique. What is she doing? She must be making some kind of salad. Wow! She threw the ingredients into the air. Fuck this shit! Ah! And she jumped after them. Good thing the stadium is so enormous. The vegetables are getting sliced up. Ah! I can't explain what I'm seeing. I get it. By slicing the vegetables high in the air, she's incorporating fresh air into the texture and flavor. Sure, okay, yeah, why not? Incredible. The super samurai chef A is closing her eyes now. I don't need to fucking look to see what I'm doing. She sees the food with her heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, samurai sympathy. What? She didn't cut anything. No, look. Oh! A spiny lobster. The passion. The pride. It's so fucking beautiful. Look at it. It's a symbol of her dedication to win this battle. What a crazy dish. Iba, what was that? I have no fucking idea. Cooking is an invitation to taste and see with your mouth. Spiny lobsters are yummy. I want to make you bust a nut in your mouth. All right, you ready? I see. It sure looks impressive. Huh? <sighs> Oh shit, I got fucking 100 eyeballs Spiny too. lobster salad. Done. Looks good. Chef A, what a natural. Her first dish is complete. All right, Gen, what the fuck you got, huh? What you got? Looks like a solid dish. What's happening on the challenger side? That looks pretty good. Stone pot bibimbap? That's a bit heavy for an appetizer. No, this is bibimbap salad. I want Amame to feel comfortable expressing herself, to show the range of her emotions. Which is why you chose such a colorful salad. And the egg on top is an accent? As much as I hate to admit it, it's clear plenty of thought went into this. What's next on the menu for Gen Ishiyagane's side? The main course. It's looking pretty good. We can't lose, Aiba. Who do you think you're talking to? I did not endure that training for nothing. What are you making next? My main course. 
Meat. Meat. I will bear my soul with this dish. I'm so fucking ready. Do it. Alright, here we go. Focus, penguins. Fucking focus. Witness it's my time. superior cooking technique. Now, Super Chef A buried her soul. Looks like steak. A steak? Kind of a simple meat dish for her maid. No? Miss Super Chef A. I'm sure she has some plans for that meat. I can see the future, Uda! I see. Let's take a look. The <laughs> meat is up in the air. She's instantly resting the meat after cooking it. It's a high-level technique. Apparently, a lot of, a lot of Iba's techniques for cooking are chucking it really high in the air. And now, Super Chef ah! has taken flight like a hawk. She's going to salt the meat in the air. Salt that meat. Wow. <sighs> She's salting while spinning. Amazing. Why is she doing this? Why not? I don't know. It's beyond comprehension. That's a lot of salt, Iba. Now, Super Salty Chef A has returned to the ground before the meat. Stay salty, bitch! Wow! She's uh, going onto the gas stove and creating a pillar of fire! Holy fuck! Hellish made medium rare! I'm cooking at a high temperature. She's going to trap in the juices. Holy crap! Where all the other stuff come from? Stay cooked over the fire of Hades! Mm. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. Damn, I love it. I love eating food that's literally gold. I can't wait to try it. What are the chicken wings around the steak for? It imitates the beautiful legs of an insect. Yeah. Iva, are you trying to lose? The aesthetics of food is just as important as flavor. Okay. If you really think so, you do you. That's... I'm all... My elegant steak meal is complete. It looks good. Our fantastical fantasy, Super Chef A, has completed her second course. Meanwhile, on the Gen side... Is that... fish? Well, mommy deserves to be free. I want her to be herself. Yes, free as a fish, swimming in the vastness of the ocean blue. Steak versus fish. This could be what breaks the stalemate. Interesting. So a lot of his... a lot of his somnium is rolling around. Trying to uh, help a mama. He's doing fish. Are we gonna be okay? Worry not, my little kitten. Did you not see how much training I accomplished? I feel like this persona of yours is getting weirder and weirder every time I talk to you. Shut your dirty whore mouth, Mizuki, and watch. The time limit is almost upon us. The next dish will be the last. Need some fucking dessert. I'm making dessert, of course. The finishing touch will be dessert. Mine will be the best. All right, here we go. The time has come, and so have we penguins. Let's do this shit. Uh, uh, uh. Oh god. Time. Witness my superior cooking technique. Super Chef A finale. What will she make? It's a dessert. The Super Chef Miracle Whipper. Oh, whip the shit out of that. Like no one I've ever seen before. Whip it good! I'm a whip it good! Whipping is all about the speed. <laughs> wow, what's this? Oh my god, heaven's light! She's going so fast, it's creating a pillar of light! This defies all laws of physics! I don't know what's happening! Now throw it in the She's air, too! throwing strawberries into the light! The sky is sucking up the strawberries! Wow, what is happening? Super Chef A, Queen of All, has been absorbed into the pillar oh, of light. Holy shit, there she goes. Bye, Iba. The queen will now challenge the gods themselves. To the gods themselves. What is going on? Here? What the fucking fuck is happening? Holy mother of God. Ah! What the fuck? Uh, whoa. Challenge against the gods. What am I even looking Super at? Super Chef A of the sky has returned from the heavens. Have the gods forgiven her hubris? No. God Chef A is holding a cake. What? You can't even see the top. 
escaped by challenging the gods. She created a cake tower of <laughs> Wow. Good luck finishing this cake. The most insane dessert mankind has ever seen. Yeah, that's right. Fucking Gen over there is making food. I'm making a religion here. Even the gods are amazed by this dessert. I think you're taking this way too far. Is this? I'm gonna eat that eyeball too. I'm gonna... God cake? Served. How do you even eat this? Now, Ultimate Chef Bay has completed all her dishes. Can that dessert be defeated? Let's check out Ken's side. D donuts? Ooh, donuts. Amame deserves love. Forever and always. Aw. Hmm. The idea here must be that everyone, young and old, male and female, loves donuts. It's true. I don't think I've ever met anyone that doesn't like donuts. I remember back in the day, people would line up for hours to get good donuts. This looks promising. Both contestants have finished. Now is the time for judgment. I will judge which three-course meal is the best for me. For sure, Amame is gonna pick Gens. Literally everything he did was for you. Oh yeah, that was the theme. Aiba, are we okay? It should be fine. I hope so. Again, this is why we need three judges. What are we tie? Judgment time. Please judge the shocking superstar Super Chef A's dishes first. Maybe Kameji would be a tiebreaker. Mm. <gasps> this is good! Ah, I'm busting the biggest nut! Ah! See, I told you, big nut bust! This lobster is a work of art! The lobster is cooked perfectly! It's too delicious! This is... This is good! Arrgh! It almost tastes like it's alive! What do you mean by that? It's so good, I can't tell if I'm eating or if I'm being eaten! <laughs> My senses have inverted from the flavor! I'm getting eaten out right now, dude! Arrgh! That didn't clear it up. <laughs> I smell freaky, Oda. It's nice and juicy! Oh my god. I made two of those? This is... This is good! This thing's gonna fucking tip over and crush Oda. This cake is going to take me to heaven! Climb it! She literally did that! <laughs> she, she literally did that! The sweetness is just right! And the challenger, Gen's cooking. Bibimbap salad? I hate to admit it, but this is pretty good. Yeah, it's good. The fish is perfect. You can taste the freedom in the flavor. The fish is so good, too. Yeah, but does it fucking blow your mind to another dimension? And this donut, you can taste the spirit of it. It's a flavor unlike any other. Look at this regular ass food. Fucking piece of shit. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Wow, the lexicon on her. <laughs> a simple, it's good is all she had to say. Because it's good. In any case, who will be decided the winner? This will be tough to judge. Kamesh, you better pick me, all right? You fucking better pick me, you sack of shit, all right? I paid you off, you know that. Do you think you're gonna win? I hate to say this after all that, but is this even going to uncover Gen's secret? Who cares, all right? It's all in the contest now. I don't give a shit about the stupid loo anymore. Mm. Let's head to the results, please. <clears throat> the winner of this cooking battle is... That blue guy in the audience! All 300 of them! Super Chef A! Oh, yeah! What? Yes, we did it! Really? Why? Why? Whoa, that seems a little harsh. Uh-oh. Cage within a cage. I won the cooking battle, convincingly. and destroyed Gen's spirit. Release Gen from the cage. Huh? Gen went into the cage. He locked himself up after being rejected by Amame. So you shouldn't have won? No, the mental lock is unlocked. We are certainly closer to his true heart. Hmm. Gen put all of his passion for Amame into his meals. Let's investigate the dishes. Cooking skill, what? Cooking skill, parentheses, cooking skill? Can be improved by repeatedly performing the same action. Command. What? You have four minutes remaining. 
Uh. Okay, so we got three dishes here. Bibimbap salad. Ota said the egg was important. Inspect. Bibimbap salad. It is an intricate dish. It could even work as a meal. The key to this dish is the egg. I wonder how it tastes. Uh, how do you like eating your jellyfish? Pickled miso soup, Chinese salad with peanuts. With peanuts. Damn it, that's impish. Whatever. I got achievement. I think for perfecting the, uh, Hell's Kitchen, right? Form rank three, cooking skill three times during Gensomnium. Ha! Ah, I'm the best. To go with me. All right, let's go ahead and have a bite. Yes. Let me taste it. Hopping to the past. I am sure you're well aware, Game, but you are the result of genetic modification. You were birthed from an egg that had its genome altered in the course of researching eternal life. But this resulted in extreme changes in your bone structure. Your epidermis is also abnormally hard, closer to rock than human skin. You are a failed experiment. Pitiful, really. That's why he's able to tank so much shit. Ow. I was born into this cruel world looking like this. But I don't resent Chikara. Not really. Maybe it's more accurate to say that I've lost all emotion. Happiness, joy. It's all gone gray. This is just my reality. It's how I live every single day. I want Amami to feel comfortable expressing herself. To show the range of her emotions. That's terrible. Shakara Horadori is an awful man. Yeah, this motherfucker fucked with so many people. Amame. Do you know what was missing from Geni's dishes? What? It appears there was a specific reason Gen lost. Feelings for Mame, sugar, motivation, creativity. Sugar! Or perhaps not enough carbs? Mizuki, are you serious? Sorry, I think I'm the one lacking carbs. Don't you want to find out more about Gen? But he's trapped in his cage. What about his dishes? Right, let's investigate. In this world, the chef's is inside by it, you, the chefs throughout the- what the fuck? This is Gen's fish course. Eat. I will try it. Hey! What are you looking at? Nothing. What's with that mask? Why don't you show us your face? Monster! What the hell is with this guy? He's a total freak! I didn't do anything. Fuck off! You'd be better off dead, freak! Jesus Christ! So violent, why? When I was young, there was this kid bullying me. I pushed him and ended up breaking his bones. Every one of his bones shattered. It's like everyone says, I am a monster. If I stand up for myself, people get hurt. So I just took everything I got. All the judgment, the teasing, the beatings. Omame deserves to be free. I want her to be herself. Seemingly like what, it's almost like he he's like living vicariously through her, right? Left. Like he wants for her this. what he couldn't have. Gen's donuts. Eat. Let's try them out. The fuck eats donuts with a freaking knife and fork. do with all this stuff you seem like you could use a hand can i help oh thank you 
Yes, could you hold my baby for just one second? Baby. Gonna eat your baby lady. Stupid breeze. People avoided me. Pushed me away. I was useless in a society like this. Unneeded. It was like I didn't exist. Or maybe I'm not allowed to exist. Which is why I started living my life in hiding. Amame. Deserves love forever and always. Gen was ostracized by society and lives a lonely life. Genny. Oh, Gen, self love. Self love? Yes. I appreciate the way you care about me, but. You can't keep hiding your heart in a cage, Genny. I want you to escape that cage. I was useless in a society like this. Unneeded. Do you think I think the same way? If I stand up for myself, people get hurt. So I just took everything I got. All the judgment, the teasing, the beatings. It's like everyone says, I am a monster. I never once thought you were a monster, Genny. Aren't you afraid? Not at all. Aren't I... disgusting? No. I think you're charming, if anything. And I know that... your heart is more pure than anyone else. I want you to love yourself more. Do it for me. But I... That's why I love you, Gen. That warm heart of yours, too. The way you look. All of it. Oh, Amame. Oh, I know. Amame never feared me. I do have a place. There are people out there who need me. Not many, but it's enough. My place is here. I wanted to eat your cooking, Genny. I remember now. I remember her saying it before. Yeah. Okay, then. Frog meat again? Nope. This is alligator. It's really good. <laughs> Thank you. The freeze heart! Nope, no choices in this one. Find the last clue. I'm glad. I'm really happy. Now let's go back. You idiot. We haven't found any clues yet. Here you go. What? This is on the house. Oh, thank you. Hmm? Balloon. It looks like normal omelet rice. Thro throw away! Oh, really? Fucking- Oh, so you, again, you have, you have to have had saved a time at the end. Be able to do this. All right, fucking eat. Well then, let's eat. Alligator meat is surprisingly easy to eat. Huh? Some gator. What happened? That's... One host. The paper. That means Gen did have it. Yes. Now we can go back. Miss, thank you. I won't lose next time. Apologies, but you can face Ota next time. 
I do not want to go through more training. See you on the flip side again. Found the last clue of the letter. That was a fun one. Cooking contest was pretty funny. Um, bleh. No bonus points for me. Vajra. Vajra Blast! Sorry. Get your own adorable baby pingy available for pre-order over at Creator Inc. Just like the penguins that came before it, this plushie's design was based off an emote from the stream channel, specifically the baby emote. This round, squishy plushie is freshly hatched from the egg and ready to be your best friend for life. But that's not all. We've also released a brand new t-shirt celebrating 10 years of making videos on YouTube. This anniversary shirt features some of the best moments, games, and characters of the past decade. In Picky Penguin form, can you recognize all of the Let's Play references? This shirt is available for immediate fulfillment, while the Baby Pinky Plushie is available as a limited time pre-order ending on August 15th. So click the link in the description or check YouTube's merch shelf and order yours before it's too late. February 12th, Left Behind, Mizuki Chapter 2. Where's Genny? Abnormal activity was detected in his brain after the sink. It's not anything serious, but Pewter decided to take him to the medical office as a precaution. Gen's brain is atypical. The nano cables may not have been connected properly. Is he okay? Like I said, nothing serious. It's not life-threatening and there shouldn't be any side effects. Okay, if you say so. Peter about to walk in and be like, he's fucking dead. But I wanted to ask any tons of things. About Chikara and why he lied. I am curious about that too. But we should hold off until later. Yeah, before we do anything, let's solve Terror's annoying little puzzle. Yeah, we didn't see anything related to Tokiko either. I mean, and like, I guess you could say Chikara in some ways, because Chikara is connected to Tokyo, but Tokyo didn't show up in his Somnium in any way. Yeah. Right. We got our third clue in the Somnium. The pieces of paper in the balloons. One said one, and on the other side, host. The one at Ion said two, and Anra. And? The one at Ikume Shrine said three and Indig, right? So, Hyoin. I can't even look at my log. Yeah. Actually, wait. Strad G? <laughs> I was thinking it'd be Hyoin Strad. Whatever the word is. But what I... are these signifying? Hmm. Well, if we line up the letters Indigo Underwear Hostess? That's way too many letters. Where are you getting this from? Oh, I know. I know you don't know, so don't say anything. You were probably about to say something even worse. Order pants! <laughs> Shit, the smile. Could you two please take this seriously? The letters on the pieces of paper. We have to go to the moon base. What do they signify? Oh, God damn it! So it's the exact same thing. Okay, well, no, I can check my log now. Yeah, sta... strad H O U N I N Yohin, I think. I Yohin, or is it host unrandig? Do I just have to rewrite the letters? Host and ra Randy G. Yeah. I don't think that's right. I was gonna say, is it like Hordery Institute or something? Is it trying to say H O R A? The problem is I uh, don't actually have enough letters here because a D. I have, I would use, I have to use an O again, and I don't, it's not there. I have one O. I'm just gonna write out exactly what it says. I'm not exactly sure what it's trying to do. I'm like trying to rearrange it, but I'm just gonna write exactly what it is and see what they say. Mm, I really don't get it. Don't give up. Think harder. Okay, thanks for the tip. May I just write Corridori Inst? Hey, what if it was like this? There were three numbers on the pieces of paper, correct? Line them up top to bottom. And remember, these are not the only pieces of paper we found. 
there is another. Are you talking about the one at Yuyagi Park? Exactly that. Oh. What happens if you consider what that piece was telling you? Oh, I get it. I wish they should have kept him on the screen. I'm so confused by this because, like, it's like line them up all four. Like, I, it's like, are you taking the zigzag of the letters? So, like, I would get Horus, Stun, and but the problem is it's not like it's like I get the doing one cross. There's two crosses, right? But how do I cross the second one when there's only three rows? It's not like four rows. Oh, there we go. Jesus. Hora, inst, undid. It's saying underground, isn't it? Okay, I was like, I'm like, what's he trying to say? Okay, it's Hor. I was like, I didn't get it. It's Horadori Institute. And it was the last one. I was like, what? It's underground. It's gotta be. Horadori Institute underground. Yeah. Precisely. Under Horadori Institute of Genetics. Okay. I mean, we gotta go back to the place we've been to 30 times already and then where everything always happens. Who would have thunk it? I think it's only a means of to gather information for an investigation. Nothing learned in Insomnia can be used as evidence. So I, I bet I headed to the Horridor Institute of Genetics. No warrant? We're not letting you in without a warrant. Here's your warrant, bitch. Bam! And as expected, we got shoot away. Then I gave the security guard a hard right hook and crushed his jaw. And then, nah, I didn't. I thought about, <laughs> I thought about what his boss told me. Damn it. If you cause me one more headache, I'm cutting your pay. Fucking snap his neck instead. I put my metal pipe away. Looks like we got to do things the hard, peaceful way. I looked around the building for any way to get in. About halfway around the building. A back door. But it was locked. It looked like there was an alarm on the door. That's when, suddenly, I kicked the door down. Well, well, well. I never thought the police would be calling on my skills. Chaplain. Thank you for your help. Nah, don't thank me. I'm just doing this for old time's sake. I was wondering, though, where is this underground room? Oh, right. Terror's challenge. It pointed you to underneath Horadori Institute, right? But I've never seen anything there. Huh. I mean, I heard people talking about it. I heard this one lab guy there say, Hey, this lab that we're in? This is a huge space. There might be some hidden passageway or something. But it's not like they knew for sure or anything. A hidden passageway. You're gonna look for it, right? I'll help. <laughs> We've been talking about this fucking hidden passageway for a while now. I already bought this ticket. Might as well take the ride. But first, my Tamagotchi. What do you think of mermaids? Cute. Get get excited. Pretty slimy. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking. I looked this one up, and uh, apparently, cute is the crazy one. Okay, sure. Hey, there we go. All right. So, uh, e. Is that a jar? Uh, that's supposed to be Sejima, right? Why is he inside of a jar? It's not like he's wearing a kimono or anything. I have no idea. Whatever. Still have yet to get the one to my left there. All right, uh, so apparently I get the one I'm missing. I need love. So what kind of Sukomi do you like? Apparently the loving one is playing along with Sukomi. Sure, whatever. I don't know what the fuck a Sukomi is. All right, anything in here? Pot of fluid. Thermometer. Lay it. Crap, a lookout. Hi. Oh, shit. Ha! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Ooh, they're gone. Lian just stood there. He didn't actually move at all. All right, about that tattoo. What, this? I got it in Bali. It says, Danger Zone. Cool, huh? No. I went to the Danger Zone. Hey, remember what we were talking about at the Kumakura office? You said there were a bunch of rumors about Chikara. Okay, right, speaking of Kumakura, you guys also, I also saw a lot of you guys say, you know what they got the worst in the game is MoMA. Like, they turned him basically from a cool Yakuza dude who had, like, a sort of a secret crush on Iris to a fucking just weeaboo dickhead who all, his whole character is being in love with Iris. And I guess, to be perfectly honest, I wasn't really crazy about MoMA in the last game anyway, so I'm kind of, again, I'm kind of neutral in this one. I thought he was kind of a weird dickhead in the last game too, to be honest, but whatever. Yeah, 
Some shady human experiments are being done here. Something about DNA manipulation and gene therapy? I don't know exactly. I hear they modified the DNA of embryos and gave birth to a bunch of genetic experiments. All for the goal of eternal life. Cool. Chikaro was in charge of everything. He had a close circle of trusted associates that ran the experiments. I don't know exactly how it happened, but eventually, word of these experiments started to spread to the outside world. And that's what caused the facilities to close. And that's when Chikara ran and went missing. But they never proved anything in court. The building had already been demolished. All the evidence? Toast. So a year later, Chikara could just rebuild the whole thing. <laughs> and do it again! He named it Horidori Institute of Genetics and started all over again. Are human experiments still happening here? No, I don't think so. But they're doing something creepy. Creepy? There's some virus called the TC Purge. I'm not a doctor. I don't really know how it works, but if it gets inside you, it messes with your brain. It makes you hallucinate and think crazy things. Hmm. Sounds a bit like Ryuki, doesn't it? And it spreads in the air. If this virus gets out somehow, the human race is in for a rough trip. Yeah, a rough ass trip. Can you picture it? The whole world going crazy. People everywhere doing the unpredictable things. Crazy things. Over and over. Again and again and again and again and again. Did you find anything? This isn't going to be easy to find. Huh. Reminds me of my glory days, huh? It really takes me back. Less talking, more looking. Yeah, yeah. Less reminiscing. So what time is it right now? Game time. It is 23.45. Totally in the time. Okay, we've got 15 minutes to find it then. Why? At midnight, the new shift of guards comes in. And that's their patrol schedule. Okay, better hurry the fuck up then. Huh? Huh? Crap, another- Oh shit. <clears throat> X button. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I see... Medicine bottle. Damn it. This is- Oh, a diary. A journal or research log. One of the researchers must have left it. But it's locked, right? Indeed. In that case... I picked up the locked journal. Oh, yeah. Break it. Hey, it in the journal. What's this? I found it earlier, but it's locked. Okay. Let me see. Huh. <laughs> Easy. Got it open. Leon handed it back to me and opened it. Like I thought, it was a journal kept by one of the researchers. The first part was mostly complaining about the bosses. There was a section about which of the girls working there was were the hottest. Homoka won, by the way. None of that interested me, so I flipped the pages. Halfway through, I found a disturbing entry. I've heard tons of rumors regarding Chikara Horidori. Ever since I started here, he locks the place up every night by himself. And then... He gets up to something. Could he be tampering with the experimental data? Could he be licking Momoka's keyboard and chair? Ew! Ew! That would be like we were indirectly kissing! Oh, fuck! Screw that pervert! That's when I got the idea to leave my phone behind one night and record everything. The next morning, I checked the video, but Chikara wasn't on it. Actually, the only thing I recorded was some strange sound that kept repeating. The melody went something like this. Fa mi mi re ti la mi so. What could that be? Fa mi mi re ti la mi so? Those must be the notes of the recorded sound. Hmm. This alone does not help us. Weird sang song. Can you come over here? What's going on? I knew it had to be a statue. It looked like the ankle on this statue move. So I tried turning it around, and I found these buttons. Is this a keypad for a pin code? But there are only seven buttons. Try pressing all seven buttons in order, and then... 
I see. Each button plays a different note. But it was all over the place. I don't think that was in order. In any case, the sequence we must enter is obvious. Go ahead, Mizuki. Ah. Uh, okay, so... Ba mi mi re ti las mi so. Ba mi mi re ti la mi so. Ti la mi so. Behold! There it is. It's like a mist puzzle. Leon! Look, the hidden passage. Shh. Not so loud. You'll hear us. What? I guess it's more like a staircase than a passageway. I mean, technically it's a passageway. This below ground area is covered in tungsten. That is why the x-ray did not reveal anything. Right. Let's get moving. It's covered in tongues. Slowly going to make our way down here. That's daddy, Leon. You stay in front of me. It's locked. Yes, this is where I come in. Yet again. Yeah, it's open. Amazing, Leon. I said don't be so loud. Ooh. Leon, are you ready for this? Am I really a cop? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm fucking ready. Okay, let's go in. About to fucking bust out of the matrix or some shit, I don't know. Chikara's sex dungeon. This is... February 13th, The Expense of Spirit, Mizuki Chapter 3. Huh? What is this? I don't see anything at first glance, but something is up. We should search this place. Huh? What is it? I thought I heard something. Leon, did you hear anything? No, nothing. I think you're just hearing things. Besides you two, I detect no biological life here. I do not detect anything on the stairs, either. Okay. Guess it's fine, then. Sorry for spooking you. Let's search the room. Yes. Let us do the usual routine. Going in my freaking AI space. Virtual space. Oh. Leon isn't here anymore. Remember what I have explained previously. In this space, Objects and individuals that are irrelevant are excluded from the recreation. But even though I can't see him now, he's still in the room, in reality. I'm basically sleeping. Correct. He is searching the area. Let us leave Leon alone for now. Focus on the investigation at hand. Got it. Okay. Power switch. It's a power switch. It was on when we came in. Is it a light switch? It looks a little big to be a light switch. Perhaps it powers the entire room. Could be. Mizuki, there is a power line that leads to it from above. Follow the x-ray. Okay. Uh, goes through there. Metal plate. There's a door on the other side of the plate. And perhaps a hidden secret beyond it. So I got something up here. Whoop. Ceiling power cables. A power switch and an electrical line leading away from it. The line splits in two. Let's follow both. The power line in the ceiling leads to the other side of this wall. And if you follow it further? Uh, right here. There is something in this wall. Is it a switch? Yeah, by pressing this part here, it turns on. A hidden switch. What happens if I press it? It looks as though it powers a different area. 
Okay. Huh? Is this a tooth? Ew. It is the first molar of the upper jaw. Ow. It does not appear as though it was pulled out with any instruments. There are no marks on the tooth's enamel. Then how? Perhaps the owner of this tooth was punched in the face. Whose tooth is it? Unknown. Let us call this person T for now. T for tooth, of course. Gross. Vent? I wonder if the air is being ventilated properly. It's stale in here. We are underground. The airflow is likely quite poor. No, that's not it. I don't know how to explain it, but there's bad air down here. Some bad juju. There's an iron plate above the door. What's that doing here? Perhaps some sort of shutter. If that plate came down, the door would not be able to be opened. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Blood! I see some blood stains. It appears that much time has passed. Years at least. And footprints in the blood. There's a square hole here. It is a foot switch. Similar to those used at hospitals to open emergency doors. You can use your foot to trip the switch, leaving your hands free. But it does not appear to be powered currently. Okay. If I want to use this switch, I've got to feed it some power first. And one more thing. There are footprints around the switch as well. The same prints from the bloodstains. These prints are also old. Likely many years. So someone has not been down here in a while to make use of that. Hmm. We have collected all the ingredients. Ingredients for what? You don't know? A movie! Judging by the clues, something occurred in this space many years ago. Someone, let's call them X, came to this room and did something. If we can follow what X did, we can discover new information. Huh. Anyway, just answer my questions. Okay, sure. Let us begin. What do you think X did first when they came to this room? Can turn the power on. When we came here, the power was already on. But it's probably not always like that. An astute assumption. We need to restore power to the entire room first. We will not be able to proceed without it. Okay. And next is... What did X do after turning on the power? Threw tooth on the floor. Flipped the hidden switch. Probably flipped the hidden switch. I am positive. There are no bloody footprints under the switch. Therefore, someone, most likely T, was not yet bleeding when the switch was pressed. Maybe this is a dumb question, but how do you know the switch was pressed? Because of how the foot switch is wired. There are two power lines within the tube. Electricity comes from here and then goes back up the ceiling and ultimately terminates in the foot switch. We can leave the foot switch be for now. Let us move on to the next step. Okay. After pressing the hidden switch, what do you think X did next? I like how we're not doing the whole stupid, like, filming shtick this time around. It's not yet. Licked the blood! Punched T. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Licked the blood. When T got their out, they started bleeding. That's what caused the puddle of blood. Right. Then X stepped in the puddle. Causing the prints. The finishing touches. It goes without saying what X did last. Swallow the tooth. Use the foot switch. Correct. There are bloody footprints near the switch. It is clear that X came here after T started bleeding. Power is sent here by turning the hidden switch on. Therefore, if you were to trip the switch with your foot, And now we know what X did. Prepare the reenactment. No, never mind. I knew what else. I spoke too soon. Ugh, this again? Are you ready? Um. Okay, here we go. I didn't say yes. The camera is rolling. Ready? Action! 
My name is Mr. X. I came here for a certain reason. Yes, yes! Keep that energy up. What did X do first? First, I need to turn on the power. And then, do this to the hidden button. Bonk. And so, the foot switch should have power now. Stop, Mizuki. You forgot something. Oh, right. I need to punch T. Though, I still don't know exactly why. Fuck you, T. Eat this! Anyway... hi -ya! Take this, Mr. T! Oh my god, what the fuck did I do to you, Mizuki? Ah! 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 Yes. And then X must have stepped in the puddle of blood. And lastly... Step on that shit. Ugh. Something should happen now. I don't know what, but... Something. Let us leave the VR world behind and do this in the real world. Yeah. Even though I still don't get why you had to record that, I think I get the picture. The Tooth! Following my steps from VR, I put my foot on the switch. Leon's like, you okay? You were sleeping for a while. Suddenly, I know what to do. And then... Oh, shit. What the fuck is that? <gasps> oh, shit! Can't be. Tokyo's other half, huh? Mmm. Did it not get used, maybe? Did it not get, like, set up somewhere? What is this? <laughs> Dude, Lee, calm down. It's just a dead body. God. Is this where it was stored, maybe? Eh. Mizuki, what did you do? I fucking killed her, Leon. I fucking killed her. I'm gonna kill you now, too. I guess what you did doesn't really matter. It's the corpse. It's Tokiko Shigure from Nice Japan. Her left half. What is she doing here? But how should I know? Weren't you the one who made her show up? I mean, I guess. Oh, hold on, my Tamagotchi wants to talk to me. What weather do you like? I love a sunny day. I had a feeling that that one made sense at least. Blood. Blood stains. Looks like some old and some new. Correct. These stains also must have come from multiple sources. It is safe to say that one source is Tokiko. I cannot yet tell who the other sources were. That will require a thorough inspection. Okay. Circular machine. This does solve one big mystery. What? All of the victims of the HB case were cut at the molecular level. Those cuts were likely performed by this machine. Aha! So this is some kind of slicer? Exactly. Do you see that wire on top of the machine? That is CNT, a braided carbon nanotube. The diameter is about 0.4 nanometers. A single nanometer is one billionth of one meter. So it is not visible to the naked eye. But I can see it. And feel it! That is because I am modifying your vision. I am emphasizing it on purpose for your benefit. So you're saying that carbon nanotube was used to bisect all the victims? That is highly probable. So all the murders took place? Here, most likely. Including Tokiko. But why are there two machines? Well, unknown. Okay. Her estimated time of death is 1900 yesterday. Yesterday meaning the 12th. It is currently 1 a.m. on the 13th. So, roughly six hours ago. Hmm. But why? Mizuki, look at her wrist. Slit wrists. I do not believe this was self-inflicted. The cut is deep, but there are scars as well. Perhaps she did try to take her own life in the past. Ah. Wanted to escape the simulation. 
Set me free! Mizuki, what are we gonna do with the body? I'm gonna eat it. I can't just leave her, but... I need to see what's on the other side of that door first. You're really gonna go? I'm gonna walk that door and there's gonna be Ryuki through the other side or some shit. Are we gonna, is this like the alternate... The two sides of the timeline? Yeah, why? I don't know. What if the murderer is in there? Terror? All the more reason to go. Wow. You're really courageous. You're younger than me, but... I respect you. Leon, you should wait here. What? If that iron plate drops down, I might get trapped again. Oh, right. Okay. Wait, you're just gonna leave the two of us here? The one and a half of you, yeah. <sighs> anyway, gotta get going. If I get trapped, help me out, okay? Yeah, I got it. Better not turn to be a bad guy, Leon. I swear to God, I'll be pissed. Fucking punch you in half. So, gym? Indoor gym and a bed? Someone's been living down here for a while. Oh, shit. What is this place? Nice. A bed, refrigerator, shower, toilet. Is someone living here? More like confined here. Look at the door you came in from. Hmm. There is no handle. It cannot be opened from this side. Good thing Leon is on the other side. If we were all trapped in here together, within a week, Leon would have become a rabid animal. And then... Ha! If that happened, I would have beaten him to death. <laughs> yeah, we all know who's the alpha here. Anyway, we should search the room. Ah, oh, shit, it's getting crazy, but... All right, guys, I think this is probably a good spot to end things here for now. Ooh, the plot thickens. So who the hell was stored down here, you think? Do you think it was uh, Upside Down Face Girl? Do you think it was Terror? Do you think it was both? I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna hopefully fucking figure that shit out uh, next time, guys. But uh, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not ready to become Picky Penguin. Aboard this cell, P where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy!